Welcome to another studio vlog. My name is Brett Park and in today's fun and fresh video We are gonna be packaging these ceramic tigers. I made 50 of them last week and y'all sold that shit out in Five minutes. Five minutes is absolutely nuts. I talk about it literally in the next clip. So you're gonna see the entire process of me packaging y'all's orders and preparing for the next two drops in my graduation day sale. Again, I am doing a drop every week until graduation. We are on the second one, which launches literally today, 12 p.m. PST. And I'm dropping photo cards myself, which I will explain in later clips. This video is just a vibe, so come along with me as I start my very small business. For the first time ever, I had like an official drop of these ceramic little tigers and there were 50 of them. I had been preparing for this drop for like weeks in advance, creating promo material, filming videos for it, making the actual ceramic tigers itself, which was a process. But what's literally crazy is that we sold out in five minutes. Five minutes. Roll the clip. I am so stressed. Oh my God, it's 11.59. Oh, I'm about to, oh, I actually can't talk right now. Um, do I, do I press save? I'll press save and see what happens. I'm not sure if it worked. It worked! It's up! Oh my god, that was so stressful. I was so nervous this morning, so I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna go on like a 10 mile run. So I went on a 10 mile run, and I didn't have headphones because my headphones freaking died because I left my AirPods case back in the ceramic studio slash painting studio. So I was so confused, babe. But now, she's up and running. Oh my god. And... Prior to launching it, there were 769 store sessions. So I'm hoping that the girlies were bookmarking this shit and not yet promote it. So I will get off my damn phone and film some TikToks. I am shocked. I just posted an Instagram story about it. I was five minutes late to the Instagram story. It's only 12.06. In five minutes, we got 48 orders. That's actually crazy. That's so crazy. Uh, I'm really shocked. Wait, does it sell out? I'm so confused. Oh, they sold out. Oh god, okay, what? Now I'm in the studio. I have all my little shipping supply materials to pack the orders themselves. I have some butcher paper and cardboard boxes to put each tiger in. Between the launch and right now, I actually glazed each tiger. And for the first time I saw what they looked like out of the kiln. I'm not gonna say I'm disappointed with any of them, but I did take out 10 of them because they just weren't standing properly slash I didn't love how they looked. But the ones I curated down to this 50 are ones I'm really proud of. So I'm really happy that y'all are gonna have them in your hands soon. If all goes well. So that's what we're doing today. We're gonna pack these orders up. We're gonna have fun. And we're getting prepared for the next drop. Week two of my four week graduation day sales. These are gonna be the photo cards and I have 800 of them. And I am more nervous for this because it's a bit more of a meme. These photo cards are simply silly. They're simply goofy. They are my most iconic moments in art school thus far. My cardboard puffer jacket, my ceramic pee, pee tiger that was six and a half feet tall, my performance pieces, one funny one of me in middle school, and one of them is me in drag. It's gonna be $10 a pack, and in that pack comes five different cards along with a little drawing to say thank you. Also, I'm attaching this whole raffle concept to it. If you do purchase them, not only do you get the amazing five cards of me, but you might have a chance at getting a ceramic tiger. I'm kind of commenting on how silly it is for graduation day people to take photos of themselves in a little cap and gown and then give like their grandparents like a little wallet picture of them. It's just such a funny concept to give someone a photo of yourself as if they would want it. So I'm exaggerating and hyping that all up to be ironic but not to be ironic because babes like, I need some money.
after doing the first order, I realized I needed to step up my process, speed her up a little bit, so I began making my own little assembly line. I thought packing orders would take at least 4-5 or five hours for 50 of them, but boy was I wrong, it literally only took probably a total of 2 hours, and that's me being a bit slow. So I folded about 10 boxes at first, and then after that I wanted to move on to the butcher paper step and then cut out 10 sheets of butcher paper. After packing a couple orders, I need to take a break mentally, cleanse myself of the repetitive nature of all that, and work on this painting. I have been working on this painting for an entire week, which for me is pretty long. I never spend more than 20 hours on a painting, usually, unless it's super realistic and I get into this meditative zone of details. And this was one of those exceptions. I got lost in the sauce, y'all. Now, in other videos, you saw that beneath this cartoon character were three panels, and these derive from a performance piece I did called from the top to the bottom and back again, where basically I'm just like licking myself, I'm just eating myself, it's a, it's a lot. And honestly, one of my favorite performance pieces ever, a lot of my work talks about stereotypes of the Asian bottom, and so through self-consumption, either literal or metaphorical, I adopt positions of both the top and the bottom, the one giving and the one receiving, in this insular cycle. The three panels were to indicate narrative, as in scene one, two, and three, but it also creates almost an exquisite corpse, which merges the head, the neck, and the chest, but the cartoon character being this ghostly figure that isn't tied down to the physical realm is able to actually cut through all of these different panels and supersedes this picture plane because the two-dimensional world is a fictitious space. There's a lot I'm thinking about with this painting but mainly just like the energy of consumption, the energy of trying to gain bodily autonomy, and then babes I had to seal this all up so I sprayed a bunch of different fixatives on it and your girl was coughing. I was coughing up a storm because of it. Had studio capstone. Ooh, mm -hmm. and what do we do? We did our final drawings that are supposed to be a culmination of the drawings we've been doing all semester. Yeah. And how did it feel drawing today? I don't know. I got to lay on the ground, so. You were on the ground. I was. Oh, I was all over the ground. ground. Yeah. I was <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about your drawing, Brett? Bad. Yeah, shut up same. Late, shut up sweaty. <laughs> you know. How was your drawing? Um, I I really like my drawing. I think it's coming out nice. Oh, okay. Jackie, how did you think your drawing was? Fully exposed. Awesome, duh. Literally so good. All of them are so good. So awesome. <laughs>
my brain was going cray cray because while I was packaging orders for the first drop, I was also thinking about the second drop, which is happening Saturday, of the photo cards. And on top of that, I was doing a bunch of different drawings of gifts for my third drop. These are gifts all related to bottom hood, to being sassy, to being fun. Some of them are relatable, really generic. Others are more specific to the queer experience and also about safe sexual things. I have to say it really weirdly so that the algorithm doesn't ban me. Which also encourages just like liberation. Love liberation. And I was really stressed about doing all these products at the same time, so I was floating between all of them, trying to give myself a break when I could. After making gifts, I went back to doing the packaging for each order because it just felt good to not have to think so meticulously about what I was drawing. And I just rinsed and repeated the same method of doing a bunch of boxes, cutting out a bunch of butcher paper, and then wrapping each tiger. I think the process is satisfying to watch. I'm not really sure if it's as entertaining, but I always love watching packaging videos on YouTube from my friends and I'm obsessed with it so I thought I'd give y'all a little taste. And you can see on each box I spent time to hand draw cartoon character on every single package and again there were 50 of them. That was crazy. I'm so fortunate that y'all sold them out. So thank you. It's about 12.30 in the painting studio. I was just glazing a lot in ceramics. I was trying to finish up some tigers I was working on. The concept for these tigers was that I was building the form faster than it could actually handle. So usually with ceramics, you have to wait for the clay to dry a bit before you build more because 
it would just crumble otherwise. But I was trying to use that to my advantage by showing the actual action and the movement of the pose. A lot of artists say that when they're using materials and they're using mediums, they're negotiating with them. And with something like ceramics, you're constantly negotiating with the material, asking it to bend a certain way, asking it to hold a certain form for a long period of time. And for this, I was thinking about the performance of the object itself and how does that relate to human beings and subjects within a society that has constant biopolitics imposed on individuals, expectations imposed on individuals so I'm making it bend to my will and demanding so much out of it that it falls and breaks but despite all this the tigers are still like having fun they're still queer and they're still trying to vibe even though like they're basically collapsing on themselves and if you don't like necessarily read all that from looking at them I think that's fine because I don't want my work to have a lot of like layers in it because I feel like layers implies a certain hierarchy in terms of Oh, if you only think these tigers are fun and humorous, then you're reading it at a surface level, and I am reading these tigers at a deeper level, which is better. I don't want that. I feel like it's just as valuable if you see these tigers as just fun, humorous, and stupid, as if you do look at it from this more conceptual side that I'm thinking of, or even considering the tiger in a way I would not expect at all. I want to see them more as constantly shifting on this kind of plane where you're able to take meaning out of however you want, and it doesn't matter which pot you grab out of, it's still you grabbing out of the motherfucking pot. Like you're still paying attention to the piece, you're still interacting it in a way. Ugh, I have no idea. And I used to get so in my head and guilty about making money off of art because one, in art school you're taught to not like commodify your stuff, even though the entire art world and market is like, that but then babes i was like this is actually the stupidest thing ever feeling guilty is one of the, like the silliest emotions it's not productive at all it's not helpful it doesn't help anyone and also it's not like i'm making like a million dollars off of these paintings and exploiting anyone i'm pricing things so reasonably to the point where a lot of people can purchase and like collect my artwork and i'm guilty over selling 50 of these 25 dollar ceramics barely my rent the thought of feeling guilty about making money would not come across if you actually didn't have money but the fact that i am privileged enough to be in the financial situation where i am i'm able to feel guilty so many thoughts in my head but mainly all this anxiety is really just a front for how I really feel about graduating. I have not consciously thought about graduating. I thought that if I kept myself busy with these art drops that are really fun and fresh, which also check out every Saturday, 12 p.m. PST, yes ma'am, that I won't have to think about like leaving a community that I spent four years in. Kind of surreal to think about also because after this, I don't have to pursue higher education if I don't want to. I don't have to get a master's degree. I don't have to go get a PhD or whatever. I can just live my life and work. And it's scary because institutions give you so much structure. That structure, of course, comes with its own caveats of controlling kind of your time and your schedule and boxing you into certain things. But structure is structure. And we're socially conditioned into wanting structure, needing structure in order to survive, to think, to live. So without that, of course, you're going to have a little mental breakdown. Who wouldn't? Who literally wouldn't? Also, things are so up in the air with my plans after graduation. I applied to like 20 different art residencies got rejected by basically all of them. The only one that I got into, I had to pay like an exorbitant amount of money to just go and spend like 12 days there, which is I'm like, this is not like a vibe for me. I will wait until like I get a little fellowship where it's free. So I'm gonna reapply for that maybe next year. The residency I'm absolutely like dying to get into is called the Fire Island Art Residency. I heard about this a long time ago. I was going to apply actually last year because they allow students to go for it. But I didn't think I was ready. I knew I didn't have a strong enough portfolio. Luckily, I've had time since then to kind of develop my work. And I'm really, really, really hoping for it, babes. Like, I really am. I really am. And also, even though the movie was actually really bad, there was a movie called Fire Island that starred a bunch of Asian American people. It was just about feeling almost like the odd one out, especially as an Asian American in a heavily white space, which I can totally relate to. I don't know, that movie like meant a lot to me. Like it really did, which is so sad because it really wasn't that good of a movie, but it just felt so good to see someone in a similar enough situation to me where I could like project onto them. And I just think making art in that environment would be so amazing. And beyond that, I just need something to do. I need something to do after graduation. I need like, again, that structure. So having that residency to be like, oh, 
you're gonna be here for two months and you're gonna be able to make work, meet new people, have fun, and just learn about not only identity for myself, but also seeing how other people experience their own identity through interacting with labels or not labels, which I really, really am looking forward to. I just need a, like a queer guidance leader, honestly, because I really have no idea what I'm doing queerness wise. How I see myself is absolutely so distorted than before, which again, I think is like doubled because of this whole graduation thing. Like I just don't know what I'm doing with my life. Probably because I attach myself to my career so much. Of course, when the career is destabilized and I'll be destabilized. And I feel so bad because I'm tackling on all this work, which I'm obsessed with like these jobs are literally the most fun I've ever had like online it's been so fun and while I do that I'm also trying to spend time with friends but the thing is like I don't have enough energy with finals and everything to hang out with people like I'm just like my mind is just spinning constantly I'm so tired all the time you can see it in how I look like babes I look exhausted I look bad I feel like when you don't know what's happening you're open to the most possibility I'm really just trying to accept the things that come my way go with the flow have such an urgency and eagerness to really get my name out there but at the same time not be desperate not be constantly chasing things or chasing my own tail just to shoot my shot put energy where energy needs to go but don't overload anything they always say that the moment you want something too bad like it won't come to you but if you want things like with intention oh maybe this is like hippy dippy but like if you want things with intention and you know it's good for you in a non-obsessive way it will come to you just whenever it needs to come to you and if it won't serve you then it won't serve you um this is so off topic the college experience wanting a normal college experience i feel like a lot of people in high school too had like a high school sweetheart if you didn't have a high school partner you'll find one in college and da 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 da, -da. i have not really connected with anyone in that way literally ever i was literally the person to be like oh my god i'm literally asexual i'm literally either asexual i'm aromantic like why is nothing clicking and I think I put so much pressure on myself to find a relationship because I wanted that normal college experience. Like I wanted to check that off the box, living it up in college when really I was just doing work all the time and constantly in the studio or at home like editing a YouTube video or something, which I don't regret at all. I think I got my shit done. But I knew in my mind that I didn't really want a relationship. I didn't really want anything. Or maybe at times I did. Maybe like things just weren't reciprocated or maybe it just wasn't the right timing, which was very rare for me to even like feel that way. I don't know how people just date people like and move on and move on and move on. That's not me. I wish it was me sometimes. I tried so hard to enter like a little era where I was meeting a bunch of people. I had probably definitely 50 first dates in college. I'm like, oh, like, I'll find someone, I'll find someone, I'll find someone. I'm like, oh my god, like, is there something wrong with me? Like, I have no idea. But no, I think it was just wanted it so bad, and I didn't know why I wanted a relationship so bad. And then when I finally figured it out, that being that I just wanted a normal college experience, quote unquote, now realizing that, I'm just glad that I didn't pressure myself into doing a thing I didn't want to do. Like, it wasn't meant to be, necessarily. And I think it'd be a different story if I never tried. You do have to put some energy and agency out there they always say like if you wait too long for the perfect moment the perfect moment will pass you by i wasn't just waiting i wasn't just sitting on my ass being like oh my god someone's gonna pick me up and save me no i was trying i really did try and i can look back and say wow i did try 50 first dates is kind of crazy it's kind of ridiculous actually some were really chill some were really community oriented that was my favorite part of the first dates just getting to know people i love getting to know people especially one-on-one -on -one. i don't know why but in group dynamics of anything of any sort it's just hard for me to keep up because i want to manage everyone's emotions properly but then like i just get like all out of whack it just never felt right essentially and weirdly enough i am trying to apply that into my future learning that i was so obsessive over that i'm no longer obsessing over any specific kind of career choice over a specific thing every time i've obsessed over something it's been bad i really wanted this google bold internship and it's super prestigious i wanted to do marketing for them so bad i like emailed the recruiter like crazy person like eight different times being like please look at my application obviously i got rejected because you cannot do that but weirdly enough i feel like i kind of know when something good might happen i had this feeling when i've been manifesting and wanting something kind of more subtly even if the feeling is there sometimes it won't happen anyways but every time it happens this unique feeling is really like deep down and that's kind of what i feel with this fire island residency okay i'm just gonna manifest it when i get that email i will get into fire island art residency whether that will actually happen or not to be determined if it doesn't happen that's fine i know that there's other opportunities that will 
come by. And if I get none of them, then maybe an art residency is not for me. Maybe I should just spend time, you know, with my family, travel a bit if I'm able to. Right now, everyone's thinking to travel to Japan because like the US dollar compared to the yen, is it, is really strong. What I do know is that it is 12, 20 now and I should probably get rest. I have a final tomorrow, a final presentation that's 10 minutes long. I don't even have the speech right now. I'm just assuming that I could yap for 10 minutes because it's about literally my art practice essentially. I'm just talking about Asian stereotypes, racial stereotypes, etc. Oh, a little final update. I did finish packaging all 50 orders, so that should be shipped out really soon. And I have the photo cards dropping 12 p.m. PST Saturday. Each order comes with five different photo cards of the eight unique ones, and you want to collect them all, babes. You want to collect them all. It comes with a tiny mini drawing, and every person who gets photo cards will be entered into a raffle for a ceramic tiger automatically. All that for $10. Be there, be square. There's a limited amount, so you want to show up for this one, babe. And if I get an update for the art residency between the time I'm filming this, which is Wednesday night, and Friday morning, which is when I'm probably uploading this video, I will let y'all know. I'm gonna head home now. Hopefully I didn't get a ticket because I did park illegally. So, we'll see what happens! Goodbye! Right now, if it is Saturday, 12pm PST, you can get your photo card packs. There's only like a hundred of them I think I'm gonna release. And stay tuned for more updates, of course. So, if you like this video, like this video. If you have fun, comment, critique, or joke, to share a comment down below. And if you like me, my art, or want to follow my journey as an art student in LA, you can subscribe or follow Brett Paint on Instagram. Yes, ma'am. And I think that's the end of the video, y'all. That's the end of the video.